Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst and Great Malabite, Emmanuel Efeni. Good morning, Ruben. Morning, Good morning, Rufai, without morning. L. Morning, Lord. <laughs> Let's start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. Yes, uh, the lead story, thousands of jobs at risk, as Kogi orders Dangote cement to shut down within 48 hours. In apparent shakedown, state government relying on resolution of assembly, which has no force of law. Yes, the ultimatum given to the Dangote uh, cement, the Obajana cement complex in Kogi state by the state government. Yes, the dispute between the state government and Dangote cement is well documented. Both sides have put their argument before the public space, their position, but the Kogi state government is now resorting to what looks like a muslin tactics, self-help to enforce what he thinks uh, it is right. But there are rules. What is the impact of this? Well, the first casualty would be Kogi State Indigenous, most of whom, a lot of the workers there in that complex are Kogi State Indigenous. So they will go home and their means of livelihood truncated, at least for some time. But the long-term effect on investment and investors in Nigeria Yes, Nia Debayo, the Minister of uh, Industry, Trade and Investment, uh, raised this issue that what is happening in Kogi State is likely to affect investors' decision whether to come to Nigeria or not. Because if Dangote cement can be doing business in many African countries peacefully without any issue, how come in his own country uh, they cannot reach agreement with a state government. But somewhere in the agreement signed, at any time, there must be room for arbitration. We urge both parties to seek arbitration. And perhaps the president, President Muhammad Buhari, who at the hunger, the UN General Assembly, found time to, on the sidelines, to converse for investors to look the direction of Nigeria will have to deal with this issue so that this does not become a black spot that investors would point at coming to invest in Nigeria. Dangote Cement and Kogi State Government. Now, the Guardian newspaper, IPOP, Mass of Jubilate, has caught quashes charges against Kano. Kano discharge, not acquitted. Federal government to explain, to explore other options. Court, federal government's abduction, rendition of Kano breached all local international laws. Kano's freedom, positive step towards Biafra restoration, Masop, or Hanez Indigo. Federal government should not appeal Kano's victory. It's time for dialogue. Yes, um, of course, other newspapers reporting this story. The Daily Sun, appeal court discharges, acquits. Now the kind of, that's how the Daily Sun is reporting. It says extradition, detention, unlawful IPOB jubilee says it will mark end of seat at home. Now, below, well, of course, below the photograph in Daily Sun, there is a political story there. Those fleeing same fate candidacy, Backing North's retention of power, hypocrites. Wiki, Yens on Wiki. Yes, of course, Yens on Wiki uh, has been talking. Of course, he never stopped talking. And yesterday, he was in, uh, he received, yes, uh, politicians from Cross River State where he told them that, look, you know what? I've accepted Atiku as a presidential candidate, I've accepted Okowa as a vice presidential candidate, but what I cannot stomach, not exact, is exact words, is 
a man called Yoshi Ayu, who told the world that if a northern candidate, presidential candidate emerges, he will step down. So he should keep to his words. So he, as he puts it, I am not the problem. Why do they call you wiki wiki? Coming to beg me for what? Beg me to accept uh, a man who cannot keep to his words. So he's insisting Ayu should step down. Not to say Ayu should go, because Ayu himself pledged to step down if a northern presidential candidate emerges. Now, the Punch newspaper, Namdekano jubilation in Southeast, federal government may appeal judgment. Now, the issue of Namdekano, yes, it was discharged yesterday. The federal government's uh, so-called extradition amounted to an illegality. Not extradition, the court used the word rendition, but ordinary folks who want to call it um, abduction. Some even use the word kidnap, but of course the court used the word rendition. But clearly what the federal government was an illegality. The last time there was such an abduction, you remember, Omaru Diko. Mm. Yes, he was abducted from the UK. Coincidentally, the president there, the head of state there, was a certain Major General Muhammadu Buhari, and today we have President Muhammadu Buhari, the court declaring that what happened to Unani Kanu in Kenya was rendition. Ordinary folks, we call it abduction. Yes, we move on. The Daily Independent newspaper, Hohanese, a federal orders, hail ruling Fred Namdi Kanu. Yes. Now, the story below the photograph, front page of the Daily Independent, two months after five airlines yet to get 50% trapped funds, debts climbed to $600 million. Foreign airlines shut out travel agencies from platforms. Yes. Uh, the central bank governor pro promised to provide forex for these airlines to repatriate their money, their sales. But five months, five airlines are yet to receive anything two months after the promise. Now, the Daily Trust newspaper, banditry, Kaduna safer after military bombardment, Aero 5, military doing what we have been yearning for. Says, Amin, Amin Amoteko, other local security outfit, not the solution. Autumn gives federal government one month deadline to approve AK-47 license for its volunteer force. Of course, the Nation newspaper also reporting that story from Kaduna. Amoteko called, call. others can't tackle boundaries, says Aero 5. Now, if we just look at the foreign newspapers quickly, now the Times of London, Tories plot Sunak and Mundant leadership. Tax U-turn expected as pressure mounts on Prime Minister. Yes, senior conservatives uh, are, are holding talks about replacing Liz Truss with a joint ticket of Rishi Sunak and Penny Mudan as, pa as part of a coronation by MPs. Of course, Sunak came second, Mudant came third. Is this a case, Robert? is this a case of the rejected stone now being sorted, cutted by the conservatives to come and clean the mess left behind or being created by Liz Trust? And they are saying that the trust of Liz Trust policies at variance with the values of the conservatives. Obviously. Ruben Arufai. You see, Mr. Feni, no matter how you try to bottle the truth, and close it, the truth will come out. Leading up to this campaign, we all made the argument that this trust tax cut plan was very populist in nature and it wasn't workable. And that's why you see, we asked Nigerian politicians, how would you do it? How much would it cost? Liz Trust had not been able to estimate how much the tax cost will cost to the British people and the taxpayer. We said it here. A lot of people said, oh, your mouth is smelling. Don't talk again. That's why will a Rishi Sunak say we increase taxes? At this point in time, UK has a big deficit. The best option was to increase taxes. The best option 
was as much as possible to stabilize the economy and have a level of fiscal discipline. But Liz Truss went ahead. This same Boris Johnson brigade supported Liz Truss over Rishi Sunak. As in the truth come out now, you can't deny the truth. Rishi Sunak had better plans. You can't deny it. It's obvious. Crystal clear. The truth, the truth, the truth will never go. Ruben, you once commended the brilliance of Quateng. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> PSV economic history, uh, pass you Quateng. Yes. But let's talk about Trussonomics. Mm -hmm. Fourth conservative uh, leader in six years. But 50% of the members of the Conservative Party are against her. In less than 40 days in office. Okay, so now you have in the party the backbenchers saying she must go. They are planning the 1922 the committee, the equivalent of a coup. They are planning the equivalent of uh, you know getting a unity candidate. Who that unity candidate will be, we don't know. Will it be Rishi Sunak? Will it be Penny Mordaunt? But the truth of the matter is that what is happening in the UK should be, as I pointed out yesterday, a cautionary tale for all leaders about how you put your matters on the table, how you engage the public. Now, uh, now Liz Truss is faced with the uh, dilemma of having to do a series of U-turns. Yes, he's planning on, another mini budget. On the uh, tax court, on uh, corporation tax, on the uh, date uh, for the presidential. People are saying she has 17 days within which to reverse herself or to go. I think other leaders can learn from that. You know, a cautionary tale about leadership and the options uh, that you make. But clearly, Kwateng says he is not going anywhere. Uh -huh. Where if uh, the prime minister goes, will he, will he remain in government? Mm. Anyway, thank you very much, Emmanuel Fenning. <laughs>